Here we go. Howdy guys, Auto Edits Jason here, and today I got a jam-packed video for you guys on a suspension setup and tuning video that I'm gonna use this car, the 1973 Mustang we've been calling Large Marge, as our test subject or our demonstration subject because if you guys don't know, uh, this car has been a long-term project. It's now finally a driver and I'm just back from a amazingly successful test drive up in the canyons where I've been doing lots of stuff around town. It's a great driver. And then the real test happened uh, a few days ago where I took this up into the canyons and beat the crap out of it. And it did amazing. So this is exhibit A for how all of the things I'm gonna share with you as a good basic foundation actually works. So a lot of the things that I'm gonna share with you in this video are applicable to multiple platforms. Now these are the settings um, that I've adapted over years of experience. I'm gonna show you some really cool techniques and tricks that you can use to tweak and tune your car, not just the base setup that I'm gonna also share with you here. And then these things overlap. Like I've applied these techniques to all of the vehicles I have, the Jeep suspension, for example. Um, you guys have seen me bonsai that thing down the Baja 1000 course, or you might not have, you should go watch that video, but I've applied some of this basic principle to the setup on that thing as well. So these things can roll over to multiple projects and in just in general in your automotive experience and world. So come on in, I got the Mustang in levitation mode, jack stands in safe spots in the middle. We'll get underneath, we're gonna start in the rear because that's just what Large Marge is showing us right now. All right, let's talk about the standout feature of the rear suspension on this particular project car, the Mustang. Uh, it's the fact that I have a canted four link suspension back here. Normally this era of vehicle would have a leaf spring. This era of Mustang, I should be more specific, would have leaf springs and shocks. Um, plenty of guys make that work and make that work well. Uh, Total Control products, that's what I was gonna do, it's just their updated leafs, but um, I went for, I opted for this one because in the long run, it's actually far more um, versatile and you have a ton more adjustability in a link with a link suspension with coilover shocks. This canted four link, which means that the, there's four links. So you have two links per side. You have this link here, the lower control link, and then you have this upper link and the likewise on the other side. And the upper links are situated as such that they do this. They, they go from the out, the mid length of the axle to a center point. And what that does is it helps locate the axle through the travel. In other link systems, you would have uh, some other device. So if you had a typical four link, which is two control arms like this going straight forward to the axle, like in the Jeep and this truck right here, uh, the newer Jeeps and trucks have basically four bars going forward. And then you still need something to keep the axle from moving around underneath the vehicle. And that would be a pan hard bar or a track bar. Now the problem with the pan hard bar is that as the vehicle goes up and down through the suspension travel that bar moves on an arc and will actually move the the axle around under the car just a little bit the canted four link keeps the axle geometry better now the drawback or the compromise from getting this is that in theory under side load or under articulation the axle may bind now that happens in stock setups that have wide rubber bushings because you have in you know traditionally in the cars like this let's say Chevelle's had you know Chevelle's and the mid mid-size uh, GM cars of the era had that worked great was an amazing and compliance suspension system for day-to-day -day traffic but the compromise was it had stamped steel upper link arms little flexi and then the large rubber bushings at all of the ends would be would have a tendency to bind up a little bit this does not this suspension i actually opted for their g link or their 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 ball pivot ball system at each end of the links and that offers that little bit more articulation so i actually have none of that bind or that compromise in this suspension um, i've grown to absolutely love this it's very comfortable and compliant yet I have been dialing in the shocks, having the ability to, to adjust, duly adjust the shocks. Now those are the things that incur more expense. So you know, having double adjustable shocks obviously makes sense. Having massive brakes at all four corners of this car. If you notice, I have the four piston wheel woods 
in the rear. That's a lot of stopping power. I love, they look amazing. And then I have the six piston road racy style wild woods in the front. And I have them on a manual master cylinder setup. So you have a very firm pedal. So it's really interesting to get used to that where you don't have a vacuum assisted boost on that. And there's a lot of stopping power here. There's no kidding about that. And it's, it's really fantastic. So those are the, the parts that get a little pricey, but they're worth it if you're going for performance. If you were saving, um, yeah, I would say you could probably go with the four piston all the way around and be just fine. But I'm hoping to see some pretty aggressive track days with this vehicle. So here's some other highlights back here. Having the adjustability on the shocks. Uh, I just went in and adjusted the shocks back from the inside angle to the mid angle and that's the recommended install. So now you have a better view of the shock mounting positions I was talking about. So this is the default or the, you know, the catch all install recommendation right in the middle here. And then you have, I went to the inside here to give me more leverage to soften it up. And that ended up being a little too soft and a little too compliant, too much leverage on the springs. I'm going to, I like it better here. So that's what we're going to stick with. And you can see, how the shock is more upright now as opposed to leaning in a little bit. I have a really uh, pronounced knack or ability to tell what the, the vehicles, to communicate what the vehicle is telling me, translate that into how to change or make changes to the suspension to get the vehicle to pr behave on more along the lines of what I want. And so I'm not intimidated by any of these adjustments so far. You can get lost there for sure, but I absolutely love being able to. So overall right now, super happy with the way the rear end feels and handles on this car. Going with a, a kit that updates the rear geometry and the, the handling like this is has been amazing. So the rear end on this vehicle is the stock nine inch housing. Now there's videos in the playlist of almost every single thing I've done to this thing. So go back and check those things out and you can get more detail on all of the things inside here. So like all of all of the brakes and the this, this uh, when I welded on the tabs to mount this suspension system in. Now the rear ring and pinion in this, it's a 350 to one. So this is not a super tall gear ratio. Now this was on the recommendation of the guys over at Yukon Gear and Axle. Uh, they, I ordered the axles from them and I cut them to fit and then I actually ordered the center section with a cool little billet uh, yoke on there. I actually like that little thing. And this has a 350 with a posi track in it. So um, no spool, nice and drivable. I don't, it doesn't chirp the tires when I'm making sharp turns in the parking lots. And watch this, it burns both back tires, no problem at any time. Now my shock settings are as followed right now. Now I misspoke in the test drive, the first test drive video, I was pointing to the wrong knob as I was mentioning rebound and dampening. So on the, on the Mustang right now, I have three clicks on the red rebound. So I have the rebound at three clicks from all the way left or, or loose or as fast as the shock will go. So it's all the way down, one, two, three clicks. And then I have literally one click on the dampening, on the black knob. So right now I have one click from all the way left up on the dampening, which is the black knob. And that's the how, how much control it has over the impact force. And then I have three clicks on the rebound, is that, and that is the, the speed of how fast the shock extends back out after hitting a bump. So right now, that's what feels really good to me, and we'll continually dial that in. Another quick thing to point out is that on the sway bar, this a sway bar is adjustable. So there are three indentations right here on the end of the sway bar. And where I have it now gives the bracket or the axle the most leverage on the sway bar so it's the equivalent of the softest and then if i i tried it actually on the middle and the 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 firmest and that just made for a little bit too much of a tail happy or loose condition back here uh it didn't let the back end transfer weight as much as i'd like it to as as a good road car like if it was gonna if i was just gonna go out and go and drifting then yeah i would tighten that up but again so much adjustability so right now it's on the softest setting feels perfect there's literally i don't feel much weight transfer back there it showed in the video but i don't feel it and that's how you know you're doing well it feels it feels good one of the things that I'm really proud of, I mean, I'm proud of, of a lot of things about this car. I made a lot of mistakes, but it, one of the things I'm really proud of is if you notice the underside of this car, 
it's pretty smooth. You don't have the exhaust dangling down, uh, even where the X pipe is under the transmission. Everything's very tidy. I like that. It looks good under there. The thing that sticks down the lowest are the two uh, subframe connectors, and that's just the kit I bought. In hindsight, I probably should have made some or got a little bit tighter ones, but other than that, it looks pretty good under here. Now there is a ton of things up here in the front of the Mustang that I want to cover as quickly as possible. Now, the biggest thing here, again, it's the coilover conversion I did. I did the Total Control Products coilover conversion for this thing, all bolt-in stuff. Go watch that video. There's a ton of beautiful product shots and all the cool stuff. Bolt-in, super easy. Again, lots of adjustability in the weight of coils. I thought I oversprung this car because I put 550 pound coils up here. Now you can adjust that. They sell them in different increments. I actually ended up liking it. It felt really good. So i uh, been able to dial that in, having double adjustability on the front shocks as well. So the very shocks up here uh, all the way around have been great. Being able to f feel and decide on what I wanted to do adjustment wise and then committing to that and having it get better and better all the time is great. So having rebound and damping and double adjustability on these shocks has been great. Uh, these are those six piston Willwoods we were talking about earlier. Tons of stopping power here and they are gorgeous. Look at that. So the highest impact item on the front end of the vehicle is the rack and pinion conversion on this car. Uh, there isn't really a bolt-on kit for this, so I had to do a lot of cutting and a little bit of welding to get the Total Control product rack and pinion in here, but boy did that end up working out pretty great. Uh, it feels amazing. Now I don't have a problem with the recirculating ball in having a steering box in this car. I was going to put a higher ratio steering box and be fine with it. Boy, am I glad I did this because it feels amazing, it looks amazing, and uh, you know, it, it just takes this thing to a whole new level. Here is a, a tip and something that I recommend you do no matter what steering type or system you have in your vehicle, it's this right here. This is the, in this case, the Total Control products. Everything on this, the suspension on this is from Total Control products, if you haven't noticed by this point. It's called a bump steer eliminator kit. And what you're doing here is you, I actually bought a gauge. So if you need one, don't buy one. Give me a call, we'll set up a time, bring your car over, we'll do the bump steer here. I have the gauge, uh, check out this photo of it. It's a cool little piece of uh, equipment. But by actually taking the time and measuring the effects of, now what, here's the ex quick explanation of bump steer, that you're, this is the steering arm. So all vehicles have a, a control arm that reaches out to both spindles and steers the vehicle. Now what happens is, is as the vehicle goes through the suspension travel, the arc of this control arm right here changes and can add, induce or add steering angle to this tire. So say you hit a bump on just this side of the vehicle and the steering goes up and if you have this set wrong, it can actually incur steering input. Like I used to, as, as good as my old Camaro, you guys remember that 82 Camaro I had? Um, I had the steer, the bump steer a little wrong on that. I actually used to think that it should always just be, you should adjust it to where it's parallel to the lower control arm of the vehicle. And that worked for me for a, lot, a long time, but I remember on certain tracks with big curbing like uh, Northern California and Sonoma and streets at Willow Springs, um, there's a couple of curbs I would hit at high speed. So you're like top of fourth gear, you hit a curb and the car would steer because of the bump steer settings being wrong. That's unnerving. Now. This car, me being an old man now, a little bit wiser and taking my time, because this did take forever, I dialed it into near perfection. Is If you guys watch that uh, video of me test driving this thing on a beat to crap road, this car, I could take my hands off on a rough road and the car tracked straight. It was unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. So come on over, I'll do your bump steer for you. <laughs> I got it dialed, we'll get you a kit. And so what that the kit basically does, it just allows you to put spacers in and adjust this steering rod to your spindle. So you remove the, the introduction of bump steer. So that was a huge deal. But these are the components that I have here on this vehicle that all proved to be great. This right here is the basic suspension and alignment setups that I asked for for this vehicle on this, our, my first trip out. I'm going to tell you the, the settings that I suggest for 
a combo car. So if you're there, and there's a difference here. So this this car is going to be a little do a little bit of everything. I'm going to want to road trip it, and then I'm going to want to take it out and get sporty. And I don't want to have to change settings that dramatically to do either. There's always compromise. A good road car doesn't necessarily mean a good road race car or an autocross car. Uh, I think I explained in the last video, go watch the test drive video. I explained toe in and toe out and all that stuff and why. So what I recommend for a good combo pro touring style car is four to four and a half degrees of positive caster. Now caster is the angle that your spindle attaches here and attaches here on ball joints. So that's your spindle and your, your actual tire rides on that and this steers. So positive caster means that straight up would be zero and then tilted back is positive caster and it would be negative caster this way. So a vehicle with a little bit of positive caster means that you now, the vehicle will help want to self center because you're tilting that spindle back a little bit. Now, on my Camaro and on really sporty cars in the past, I would go eight. I went to the alignment shop and said, okay, I want four and a half degrees of positive caster. I want a half a degree of camber. Now I'll explain camber in a minute. So again, in the past on an aggressive track car, I would put 1.5, 1.5 degrees of negative camber. And that is when the top of the tire is in and the bottom of the tire is out. You've seen that where the tire is like this sitting out on the car. And Lots of negative camber creates, as, as you toss a car into a corner and start turning like this, it creates more contact patch and doesn't let the tire roll towards the edge. Uh, a, a street car, uh, cars coming from the factory are actually designed as the tire, as the car loads and the tire gets, goes into the suspension travel as the, the weight comes from the tire and you're turning and you'll experience what they call plowing or the, the car just understeers and that's because the tire rolls over. This car used to do it when it had factory steering. I'll show this shot of the stock steering and the tire flopping over on its side and losing traction. Now that's to help keep normal people driving their cars a little too sporty on the road to feed a lot of steering and they don't want that car to snap around and oversteer. They build in understeer and that plow by having the camber decamber the tire and lose some traction. So you, you'll, you'll have experienced it. You'll turn the wheel and the car just plows through the steering input that you're putting in. So that's why I always put 1.5 degrees in if I had adjustments. And then since this, uh, the upper control arm on this one is the double throw down, double adjustable uh, upper control arm. So that actually, it was a super easy adjustment but the Total Control product suspension is designed to gain negative camber in the suspension travel. So as the must, as I would feed steering input into the Mustang, the weight would transfer to this tire. Let's give an example. And it, at, instead of lose, rolling the tire, the top of the tire outward and losing traction, it actually gains a little bit of traction as that weight comes down and keeps the tire square to the ground. And it was evidenced by looking at the wear on the edge of the tire. So it worked. So 0.5, that, that was really a very tame camber uh, uh, suggestion and adjustment, but it worked perfectly. And let's see, what's the other important one? Oh, I, I think I already told you, I towed in a 16th of an inch. So um, that's ever so slight tow in on this vehicle and it worked fantastic. So that's a, it, it, whatever you want. Uh, an aggressive road race car um, would stay near neutral a little bit um, depending on what you want to do with it. And then if you were going to make an autocross car, you actually have it towed out a little bit. So the front ends would be pointed out and that makes a really aggressive and twitchy car, but turn in is real instantaneous. So those are the, the basic rundown of all of that stuff. It's a lot to pack in right here and we'll cover more of those in specifics in future videos. So that's the basic rundown of the suspension as you see here in this shell and as I have demonstrated how well this worked in the real world. I beat the snot out of this thing in a horrible uh, circumstance. The road was torn up. But here's the deal, if you can make a car handle well there, it's going to handle amazingly well on a pristine track or road or uh, whatever. So. Down the highway, this thing is amazing. Down up that rough rough road requiring huge impact compliance. And that's the other thing I like about the Total Control product shocks is that there's a lot of travel built into this. A lot of suspension companies will shortcut 
good handling and fool you by just having limited suspension and oversprung or stiff springs and you get the illusion that oh it's stiff and the body doesn't roll that's not because it's controlling the body it's just oversprung and stiff this has a lot of travel so you have the, you let the shocks do their job keep the tires on the ground you and then you just control the body roll by gi having giant sway bars like i do on this thing right here um, and the right components in the right spots to keep everything in place and giving you, the driver, the feedback that you want and the performance you expect. So right now, not a single complaint about <laughs> any of the components on here. Now that's great. Now let me take you into the engine bay and show you some of the things that actually offered um, some bullet reliability and just peace of mind for the driving so far. I still always just kind of boggle at this era of my life when I was wearing a spacesuit every day for a job. Um, that's another video that you guys hopefully have seen. Um, here's the engine bay. It's super simple, but it has proven to be really effective. And these are the parts in here that kind of just, not till later, stood out as complete heroes. Uh, the Be Cool radiator cooling module they call it. So it was the radiator, the catch can, and the electric fans. It even came with relays and a, a, sense, a temperature sensor. So this cooling module uh, was unbelievable. I set the, it has two fans. I could set them up separately uh, in the software and it never got over 195. The hardest, I, I wound the RPMs. I beat the snot out of this thing up that on that road never even saw a temperature over 195. It usually stayed 190, 185. That's where I set it to kind of cycle the fans on and off. So a uh, hero part. When you install something on a jumble of parts like this together that just becomes a, a rock solid feature, there you go. So can say the Be Cool was wow, like super great piece. So over here you could see up on the firewall, the Willwood, brake and clutch master cylinder setup, like amazing. Having a hydraulic clutch in this car has been great, actually. Um, they don't really make a kit for the 95 T5 transmission, the BorgWarner T5 that I have in here, so I kind of made the McLeod hydraulic throwout bearing that goes onto the uh, input shaft of the transmission work, and so far it is working, knock on wood. Uh, that's been great. So this has been really good. Dialing in the bias front and rear has been good. Let me get you under, I'll take you inside and show you underneath the dash and show you a, bit, a little bit of how that stuff's working out. But that's great. The headers, the Flowmaster full length headers on this thing and the fact that they stay so tight and so tucked up underneath here and I've been able to keep the exhaust smooth under there was great. Um, it's, you know, a work in progress, but boy, these little parts right here have just proven to be fantastic. Let's uh, go inside. All right, so you guys have seen the video of me driving this thing and it, everything just working well. To me, I built it to what my tastes are and what I like, and it has been working so well so far. Like, look, the, the gauges, the Dakota Digital gauges have been fantastic. Everything that I would hope, they, they actually have way more uh, capabilities than I even anticipated. It has an altimeter. Since I went with a GPS speedometer, uh, it has an altimeter and a temperature gauge and all of these cool things, these modern features. I'll show you that a few, run through a few of those in a minute. But uh, check this out, like just everything feels so good. The pedals are right. You, you guys watch me heel toe downshift. I, I set that up so I could do that. I'll do another video on just how to do that because a couple people asked. But uh, yeah, so everything feels really quite good and has worked really well. The Flaming River column and uh, wheel have been fun. I don't know if you guys remember, but I put this quick release on there. And that's kind of being a little silly, but fun. Um, so that's kind of nice. And the tilt feature on that has worked out perfectly. Um, yeah, and my track rocker. See, that's how that works. And then you would just fire it right here. Let's go ahead and put a quick bit of fire in this thing. <laughs> That's a cold start. Haven't started it in a while. So that's how that works there. Um, pretty radical stuff. These Dakota digital gauges have been just absolutely beyond my expectations in 
fitting into this, how easy the install was and how they fit into the stock hole so I didn't have to do any more fabrication. And then all of the stuff they offer has been fantastic. Check this out, you can see the water temp, H2O temp, uh, oil pressure, and air fuel. This one is handy, it is nice. I, I, can, I watch this one because the fuel injection is constantly adjusting and I kinda wanna monitor it and watch that go. And so here, let's start it up and I'll show you. So there you go, you can see the air fuel. This is dead cold. Let's just toggle through. Intake air temp, that's another one that's really, really handy. Check that out. Let's turn that off for now so we can talk. High RPM, that one's accurate. Um, on that Canyon Road, you saw me uh, doing some burnouts. I bounced it off the rev limiter. I have the rev limiter set at 6,200 RPM. That was just what the red line was on, I actually looked up on the internet, uh, a dashboard of a uh, Cobra Mustang, and that's what, 6,200. So you could see that I bounced it off the rev limiter and it got up to 6,170. So that's safe, that's a nice feature again to have. And let's keep talking through, and that's that on this side. Over here on this side, I have a screen down on the bottom that toggles me through miles, trip miles A, B, odometer, miles per, digital miles per hour, voltmeter, uh, fuel, digital fuel readout, clock. I mean, it just has so a compass. I forgot it has a compass because of the GPS thing. So it has so much capabilities. It's just proven to be an amazing uh, upgrade to these things. I can't believe how easy this one is. So this is the digital, Dakota Digital VHX gauges blew my mind with all of these cool features in this old jalopy and that way when it's all done and nice it this just adds so much value and so much livability in the car so there you go that that was a rad one right there and there it is the basic tips and tricks on how to set up any vehicle like remember all of these things i just showed you on this car which is a pro touring style or like i like to say a true grand touring car apply to any vehicle on the road and that'll get you started. Then from there, you just dial it in with your butt dyno and just figure out what the tuning works for you or not. I'm gonna get the tires back on this thing and on the ground. Now remember, your next big adventure begins with you. So enjoy the drive. Thank you guys so much for watching.